cats, it's Ed Midsole Bud here. The viewers have been requesting my top five lists for 2022. So here we go for all those regular supporters and new recruits. Today I've got my top five speed session shoes for you for 2022. Welcome one and all and I wish you a Merry Shumas and a Midsole New Year. Today I've got for you my top five speed session shoes of 2022. These are all shoes that I've reviewed and tested and enjoyed. I think these represent the best for out and out speed and racing. If you are enjoying the content, please help us out. Hit that subscribe button and clang the bell for notifications too. It helps us out a whole bunch as well if you give this video a thumbs up, like and share it with your running buddies. This isn't my best running shoe of 2020 review. That's to come in the next couple of weeks. Or my best daily shoe video. This is all about out. Speed. Just one to add in for kicks just outside the top five is my heavily modified Nike Invincible Run Flyknit. I chopped loads of foam off here and this turned into a monster speed shoe. Just lightened things up a bit, removed the excess midsole that I didn't really need on some 5k repeats with recoveries in between. It was an absolute banger. And I think you'll find it does bear some resemblance to the soon to be released Vaporfly Next% 3. So you could just make one yourself without the carbon plate of course and just chop off the midsole. Measurements of course on that one are approximate and don't try that at home. Okay starting off the top five the first shoe we have is the Adios 7 from Adidas. I've been using this one for tempo work and 5 to 10k effort repeats around my local area. Top things about this one that make it great for this purpose are the glove like fit and the easy way you can lock the foot onto the midsole. A very aggressive response and durability of the midsole. It does really propel you forwards and I found that the outsole had a bit of a hand in that too. Carefully placed continental rubber here underfoot. It grips the ground and enables some real dynamite toe off. I mean, that's essential for speed work. The shoe's super light as well. It's not far off what you'd expect for a race shoe, I suppose, in this current era. The Adios 7's just so cheap and readily available. It's always discounted. Heaven knows why. I think it makes for a superb option for speed sessions and workouts. So that's my number five. The next shoe to impress me in terms of top line speed is the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3. This is a shoe that I quickly got up to 100 miles in. That was probably because I just wanted to wear it all the time. Super light underfoot and they improved that out sole as well which really did lift the shoe up a few notches again on one mile or kilometer repeats the shoe comes into its own lots and lots of cushion up front and the carbon plate really does come into play here when you're running at faster paces i found this one great between six to six minutes 30 per mile or 345 to about 304 per kilometer. The upper's barely here on the Endorphin Pro 3 is really, really light. I think Saucony perhaps looked at doing that to give themselves a little bit more opportunity to put more foam into the shoe and perhaps a little bit more outsole rubber. These worked superbly for slightly longer repeats and I found that they held up really well over time as well. Grip is on point this time round with a different type of rubber pattern, just improved the cornering capabilities of the Endorphin Pro 3. At position 4 for me, in terms of speed, it's the Endorphin Pro 3. At position 3 on today's list, it's the Puma Fast R Nitro Elite. A very aggressive shoe that I've really loved training in so far this year. Anywhere between 5k to half marathon pace. Puma grip, fantastic on all of the Puma shoes, but this one especially with its weight relieved rubber and placement. I really enjoy the slightly wider landing platform here in the midfoot, and the rubber here and the traction is dynamite when running at higher paces. Really good when you're cornering as well. If you're going around a bend, you feel really fixed to the floor. Certainly one of my favorites so far this year. It's certainly a speed shoe, a pace shoe. You wouldn't really want to wear it on a very slow run. Perhaps if you're doing a longer run with segments at faster paces could be ideal. Interesting at pace that it still feels nice and stable, even though we've got a much narrower heel here. Certainly a characterful design in the Puma Fast R Nitro, but it's one of the best for speed so far this year, for me at least. If there's ever been a shoe that said the word speed, I think it's probably this one. 
Moving on to position number two, which is the Takumi Sen 8 from Adidas. Now, this is an Adidas shoe that I really didn't like when I first reviewed it, but by 100 miles, I was absolutely in love with it. And it's one of the best I've reviewed over the last 12 months. In fact, the midsole just gets better and better the more you use it. How many shoes can you say that about? I'm quite excited now for the Sen 9. All they've done is switched up the upper a little bit. They've left the midsole and the outsole completely alone and that's good with me. It means more people can grab this superb speed shoe in 2023. The lower stack and the full light strike pro midsole here make for a brilliant option for short repeat sessions on road or perhaps you're doing kilometer or mile repeats. The shoe is super light though do be warned it is a very narrow upper. Even the midsole profile is quite narrow to be honest. That might mean it doesn't work for everybody. A very responsive midsole here in the Sen 8 and I do feel that it could also work very well on track too. It's mainly down to that continental rubber outsole here. It does feature some smooth sections on the lateral side. They're a little bit like a Formula One tire and then you've got this patterned piece here in the medial side. Certainly for grip it's one of the best that I've tested out in a long time. I think the thing I love so much about the Takumi Sen 8 and other Adidas models is just how durable they are. There's some real longevity here to the materials. You can use them in training and racing and you don't need to worry about whether the upper is going to fall to bits or the midsole is going to crumble away. The foam, as I said earlier, just gets better and better the more you use it. Just loosens up a little bit more. If you can find it on discount, do not hesitate. Unless you have a wider foot, these are just absolute speed gloves. Top line pace and racing on those shorter distances, this one is an absolute banger. One shoe to come, but before I get to that, let me know your top five speed shoes down in the comments. You may well have guessed it by this point, but my top speed shoe for 2022 has got to be the ASICS Metaspeed Sky Plus. I've been saving this one back a little bit over the course of the year for races. Every time I seem to get to a peak performance level, I got ill. I had a bout of COVID back in April, just after the Yeovil Half Marathon, and then another weird virus in September that was really debilitating. They've robbed me of most of the race options that I'd booked up over the course of the year, and only now do I feel that I'm actually getting back to that same level of fitness that I was at just before those two illnesses. But that aside, for speed, the Metaspeed Sky Plus is absolutely the top dog. This shoe to me feels a little bit like riding in my dad's old Triumph Stag that he used to have many years ago. It's made for speed. It feels very propulsive, yet it's very light in the upper. The shoe just simply drifts away when you start running at pace. The only thing you notice about it is that rubber outsole, which is incredible in terms of grip and traction. Probably one of the best outsoles that I've tried out in terms of grip and cornering, and that more aggressive flight foam turbo that you've got here in the shoe really does produce the goods. It's squashy and a little bit compressive, yet it's bouncy too. It doesn't feel like it's completely kind of collapsing underfoot, more like a rebound type sensation. I do seem to get drawn to this shoe and also last year's model, the Metaspeed Sky. They have similar characteristics there. I don't know whether that's something to do with how I run or something, but I am drawn to it. Don't get me wrong, I love the Vaporfly Next% Percent too, but it isn't really a shoe that I've been using that much over the course of the last year. I did review that one over a year ago. When it comes to mile repeats or threshold effort, this is one that I tend to want to pull out. I know I can count on it and it did deliver the goods when I raced back in July in London at the A6 10K. So when we're talking speed, this is my top shoe. That's my top five for all out speed for 2022. Racing, training at those higher level efforts. What are your top choices? Let the runners and I know down in the comments. Musical interlude time. More Christmas fare for you today, this time from Ella Fitzgerald. Have yourself a merry little Christmas is a nice up number. It's gonna leave you feeling joyful and slightly playful. The production here is really, really airy and nice, almost like a jazz open room production, I suppose. There's some really subtle use of all of the instrumentation, leaving a nice big gap there in the middle for Ella Fitzgerald's voice. It comes from a great album as well called A Swinging Christmas on the Verve label originally, I think. A seasonal classic, I think you'll agree. Ella Fitzgerald with Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas. Time for me to rock and roll out of here. Thanks for sticking with me to the end of today's video. Hit that subscribe button, click the bell below for notifications, give this video a thumbs up like, and also drop us a super thanks if you're enjoying the videos. My name's Ed Bird, and I'll be seeing you.